Me and Sarah Kennedy were doing Panto in Manchester with um, Anne Sidney and Billow and Cathy staff. And, um, and my agent rang me and she said, um, oh, they want you to go down to London to do a trailer for some show or other. And I, I said, really, I'm not going. I said, the show's opening tomorrow in Manchester. So that would be silly. Um, and she said, oh, well, the others, uh, Henry Kelly and, and uh, Jeremy Beadle, have, have agreed to go. And I said, well, that's their business. I said, this doesn't do with me. I've got a show opening tomorrow. I said, and I bet you Sarah Kennedy won't go either. So, I said to Sarah, you'll never guess what they just asked us to do. I said, that'd be ridiculous, I'm not going. And she said, right out of the blue, she said, oh yeah, let's go down, it'd be a laugh. And I went, yeah, all right, let's. So we got on the train, and uh, while we were going down, I said, well, I'm not bothered. Let's have a gin. So we have a few gins on the trains, and we laughed and laughed and laughed. And funny enough, we told each other lots and lots about each other's lives on the way down, like our real lives. <laughs> so anyway, then we get dressed up in costume when we get down there. We go into Trafalgar Square. Uh, I'm dressed as Bottoms. She's dressed as Dandini. I don't know what Henry and Jeremy were dressed as. Because uh, they were doing pantos elsewhere. And uh, we're all doing ho 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 acting uh, on this sleigh, the middle of Trafalgar Square. Father Christmas comes up, and I'm going, oh ho oh, oh, ho, marvellous. You know, Father Christmas gets out these presents, right? And he hands me this present wrapped. And I unwrap it, and it's the big red book. And I think it was a joke. I really thought it was a joke. And then when he took the beard off, he said, uh, Matthew Kelly, this is your line. And uh, I was really, really shocked. I had absolutely no idea. And the first thing I said, which they cut out of it, was, but I haven't had a life yet. It, it was a, a really funny feeling because I'd grown up with that programme. And the programme was for really important people. And I was 33. It was a genuine shock. Um, and when I got in the car, they take you in this car, right? You get separated from everybody else. This is the weird thing. Then you're separated from everybody else. And I got in the car and with the producer or whoever it was. And I said, oh, this is fantastic. I said, I've always wanted this. And I had, because it was a great honour, you know. It was a great thing to happen. Uh, and then they take you to what they call the victim's room. And there were clothes sent from my flat. I thought, this is getting weird now. And then you're left on your own, and you don't know what's going to happen. And honestly, I had no clue at all. Anyway, so you go on, and I don't really care. I remember I had a pink zipper in my ear. Isn't that weird? And a, and a perm, a perm, actually. And uh, yeah, I was rather snappily dressed, if I remember rightly. And then when you go on, it's just like you think it's going to be. It's just like you see it. You hear a voice, and I recognised all the voices. My favourite one was um, Brenda Hyam, who played my first stage mother uh, when I was 13 uh, at, with the Urbston Operatic. She was the loveliest woman. She was a school teacher. She was the sweetest woman. And the thing about her was she had a recording of me singing whenever I feel afraid. And the tape that she had, it was an old Grundig tape recorder, was so old that not only did she have to bring the tape, but the BBC didn't have anything to play it on because it was too old. She had to bring the original Grundig tape recorder to reel to reel to play it on. And then, um, well, after, ever after that, I don't think there was a clean story uh, amongst them really, was there? Sue Pollard and I had been in a panto together in um, Bournemouth and we, uh, we went to a fancy dress party and I went as Nuria and she went, she got her left tit out, painted in blue and went as a blue tit. She told that story on them. Uh, and then Julie Walters comes on and tells that story about how um, when we were in Van Lowe together, we were in uh, a show called Flash Harry, which was about a Liverpool flasher, where we toured pubs that... Um, as part of the Everyman Company, and the shows all had uh, political undertones. 
and uh, heavily sexual overtones, and there was a song in it called When You're Feeling Glob, Stick a Finger Up Your Bump. Well, they were all a surprise, really. I mean, there were people I'd hoped to see. And, I mean, Judy Lowe, for instance, who I'd been in a school play with, and she is such a lovely person and a very beautiful, very beautiful woman. Uh, so, yes, that was a good surprise. Um, the Red Devils was brilliant, obviously, um, because they had broken my leg. They had made me famous, actually. And I must say that um, one of my favourite guests was the last one, because they said, which was Long John Baldwin, because I'd met him when I was like about 17, I think. And, um, and I didn't really know him that well, actually. But, and of course, I had got married in his suit. And uh, so when I heard the song, I just thought, I, I just thought it was amazing. Peter Davison came on and he told this story about the fact, and it is a true story, that when I got came for love, I asked him whether I should do it or not. And he said, if you do that job, you will never work as an actor again. Yeah. So I said, Doctor Who. <laughs> Eric, I mean, Eric was just fantastic because I toured with him in an Alan Eightball play. And honestly, when you were on stage with Eric, he, he did his best to be true to a play, but really it was like being in the audience, being on stage with him, because you never knew what he was going to do next. And he was so kind. So there were things like that that were just fantastic. And there were people there who actually weren't on the show. And there were people there who were on standbys and people who, people who I adored. At the party, there were lots of people there who hadn't been on the show, show but had been in the audience or who had been asked to contribute stuff or stories and things. And at the party, oh, to my shame, um, I, I was given a bottle of champagne. I, I love champagne. Probably because I'm northern, a little bit common. Right. And I was given a bottle of champagne, and I went, and of course I was completely pissed. And I sent it back. I said, This is off. This is champagne, it's off. And then they sent another bottle, and I sent it back. And I went, this, this is off. And they sent a third bottle, and said, This is actually pink champagne. <laughs> See, is that common at all? So embarrassing, I never forgot that. Of course, my family never let me forget it. So I might as well tell the story. On the walk down, they give me the book, M, give me the book, which of course is not the book at all. Because when you get the book, I mean, I wish I had it. And you should see it now. This, the, that red book is like a metaphor for my life. Because he hands you the book, which has of course got his script in it, and you think that's what you're going to get. But no, you hand that back at the end. And I think uh, my, my hands must have been sweating or something. So as we do the walk down, I dropped the solid thing. And I felt such a dick on it. And, and it kind of became a metaphor for my life because I actually thought, this is going to be my life. I'm going to drop it, you know. And occasionally I have, but I, I always pick it up again. And, and then my wife's dog ate it. So there's a big corner chewed out of the corner. I thought, there you go, it's a metaphor for my life. It's half chewed out, dropped and all over, covered in, <laughs> in coffee stains and things. I've not looked after it, but it's got lovely pictures in it. <laughs> that's, that's what you get, you get pictures, you don't get a script, you get lovely pictures of the night and nothing written in it at all. You're expected to remember what has happened. <laughs> so I kick off, it's the best party I have ever been to. I was the centre of attention, which is my favourite thing in the whole world. And everybody's telling you, you're marvellous. And, um, and it was a great privilege and an accolade. And, and for that reason, not truly representative, because, you know, I would, I'd only been on three years on a very successful TV show, and then my career would kind of went on a bit of a slide after that. So, in a way, it was real, but in a way, it wasn't. But I have no interest in reality. The reason that they did it, of course, was because Game for Love was absolutely massive. And it, were, it was kind of a bit of a phenomenon. And that's, that's the only reason that they did it. And I hadn't had a life. I've had a life now. 
And they've been the programme, what's the point? 63 now, got a bus pass. 